Hello, I'm Dr. Pelly, and I want to welcome you to the first of six videos in the Expert Skills Program Self-Study Block. This video on the growth mindset and increasing intelligence establishes the evidence that underpins the entire Expert Skills Program. This evidence is based on a variety of research findings in education, in human performance, and in brain function. Remember that the Prematriculation Study Guide also covers the Success Types book as well as the video series. It is very important to fill out the study guide while you watch. Another document that will help you go easily back and look up points of interest in the video is the slide notes printout that accompanies each video. These printout files are also linked at the Expert Skills website at the Self Study page. Now, let's look at the main points that begin this video series. I will first address the research on academic achievement that led to the growth mindset. This is important for you because students with the growth mindset have been shown to make higher grades. Next, you will see how deliberate practice is a study method that is needed to develop the growth mindset. You will learn that a focus on correcting deficiency in certain learning skills will lead you to more powerful thinking. Let's begin with an exercise that will help you determine whether you may already have the growth mindset. The answer to the question, when do you feel smart, will indicate whether or not you have the growth mindset. Some people feel smart when they are actively learning. They tend to trust their learning more than they trust the test results. This is because they learn for understanding. This is the growth mindset. Others feel smart after they have done well on a test. They tend to trust the test results more than they trust their learning. This is because they learn to recognize what they've memorized and they need this to be validated. This is the fixed mindset. In the next slide, I will compare several aspects of the growth mindset with the fixed mindset. <clears throat> the growth mindset describes an attitude that intelligence can be increased, or, as the name implies, intelligence can grow. The fixed mindset, by comparison, refers to an attitude that intelligence is fixed at birth. One of the reasons that you might have the fixed mindset is that it actually was the common belief in the field of intelligence for many years. But the discovery of neuroplasticity has shown that the brain can change itself. Research on the growth versus fixed mindset shows that those students with the growth mindset are the most likely to succeed academically. The explanation in the is in the preparation for exams. Fixed mindset students prepare superficially for exam uh, performance because they think that the outcome is due to how smart they are and not how they study. They will simply read the material over and over and assume that it will be learned through innate intelligence. While these students believe they're working hard, they are actually unfocused and just going through the motions of memorization. On the other hand, growth mindset students prepare for learning performance by finding out what is hardest for them and then they put effort into correcting that limitation. This approach to corrected deficiency is called deliberate practice. And when we look at this type of practice more closely, you will see that focused effort is one of its main characteristics. A key contrast between the growth and fixed mindset is the way they handle failure. The growth mindset students don't view failure as final because failure points the way to increase their intelligence. So instead of seeing a grade of F, they see not yet. Please understand that this attitude toward failure does not reveal a lack of commitment. It's just a way of dealing with the reality that no one is successful 100% of the time. You will notice by comparison that failure is dreaded by the fixed mindset students. Failure brings about fear in these students because it indicates they may have reached the limit of their intelligence. 
The complications that result from this fear make the fixed mindset students the least likely to succeed. Our goal is to help you see that the growth mindset is not just following a set of rules and expecting things to just work out, but of acquiring a state of mind that keeps you focused on what you need to do next. Okay, now let's take a closer look at deliberate practice as a state of mind that produces the growth mindset. One way to introduce the concept of deliberate practice is to take a look at a well-established saying that practice makes perfect. It seemed to make common sense that if you wanted to be good at something, you needed to practice it. This view of practice was supported by early work and skill development that indicated skill was proportional to experience. A certain, or to a certain extent, this is true because perfect practice does make perfect. However, it wasn't until recently that researchers started to take a closer look at what perfect practice actually was. This research has included, in addition to medicine, the familiar high-demand performance venues like music, uh, sports, and even chess. The search for perfect practice was intended to discover what these superior performers had in common in the way they practiced. What they discovered was that these performers became perfect because they practiced deliberately, not their strength, but on their weakness. It may seem contradictory that superior performance worked on weak, performers worked on weakness, since they didn't appear to have limitations. But the reality is that superior performers are continually self-aware by identifying and correcting their limitations. They accept their limitations as normal. This alone gives insight into what lies ahead for you in medical practice. Your learning will now be a lifelong process of focus on your limitations that you cannot avoid unless your goal is mediocrity. Most patients, probably including you, likely prefer physicians with superior skills, and that can only be obtained with continued learning. To better understand what is required for deliberate practice, let's look more closely at its characteristics. One of the important discoveries in human performance research was that there was no correlation between achieving improvement in performance and innate intelligence or talent. However, there is always a correlation with the use of deliberate practice. This isn't to say that people cannot get pretty good at a skill by just practicing what they already do well. For example, getting by on talent works well in college sports, but not in professional sports. There is no counterpart for college sports in medical practice, it is just immediately at the professional level. Because the health of your patients is involved, there is no compromise on skill development. Every patient expects every physician to be at the top of their game. That is why the ESP is aimed at developing your use of deliberate practice from the beginning. The second characteristic is that it requires repeated effort. This makes sense because it is applied to skill areas that are not naturally strong. This won't be a problem in your learning since medical school requires a lot of study and most of it will be pretty challenging. Deliberate practice just ensures that your study will be smart study. Third, it requires feedback when needed from a teacher until competency has been acquired. Again, there are plenty of opportunities for this in medical school and you will find that your questions to your teacher will be more intelligent and productive. I much prefer to help students who have already made an effort to identify where they're having a problem. By comparison, it's quite frustrating to work with a student who wants me to reteach everything. Since deliberate practice is mentally demanding, you will fire it, find it to be tiring. Some students view it like a workout at the gym. When you're, ti you're, you're uh, tired when you're done, but you feel you have accomplished something valuable. Although learning can often be a lot of fun, it takes a special kind of motivation to keep going when you're working on your limitations. 
But then again, isn't that what you expected in medical school? Number six, on our list, <clears throat> uh, it re uh, refers to uh, self-actualization. This is the be-all-you-can-be view of yourself. When you experience progress in balancing your skills, you will perceive yourself as being more in charge of your learning and less of a victim of the system. One caution that has been revealed by the deliberate practice research is that if you lose your awareness and allow your behavior to become automatic, your skill development will deteriorate. You will know this is happening when you begin to focus only on what you are learning and omitting your awareness of how you are learning. This will lead you to unconsciously avoid your limitations and stick only with your strength. So the important point of this emphasis on awareness is that smart study involves using both your strength and your weakness. You can learn more about deliberate practice and how it applies to medical education on the homepage at the Success Types website. Now we need to briefly consider how the growth mindset depends on understanding the learning process. The concept of metacognition is fundamental to the development of the growth mindset and its influence on better academic performance. So what does this term really mean? Metacognition is derived obviously from the root word cognition or the thinking process. Attaching the prefix meta creates a self-reference. So, for example, a metagame is a game about games. A meta-analysis is an analysis of a set of analytic studies. Thus, the meaning for metacognition is that it refers to thinking about thinking. I'm going to help you learn about metacognition by showing you how the different areas of your brain function when you're learning. I will focus in the next video on four main areas of the brain that represent different types of learning skills. I will also show you how these same areas of the brain function when you prepare for tests and when you're working with patients in the clinic. Now, let's look at the main points of what we've covered. First, the growth mindset provides the motivation to work hard from the belief that you can increase intelligence. The end result is improved performance on tests. Second, I introduced deliberate practice as a way to work smart to increase your intelligence. Both of these concepts require an understanding of metacognition in order to know how to achieve the growth mindset. In the next video, I will explain metacognition more clearly by describing the clinical skill areas of the brain and how they function in clinical thinking. I look forward to having you join me there.